Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for your word. We thank you for good ground, God, this morning. We thank you for the hearts of your people, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that this word shall land upon good ground. We thank you that it shall go and accomplish what it has been sent to do. We thank you, God, for the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. We thank you, God, for this morning's word, God. We thank you that your people will be set free. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for a good word, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you that the word tells us that all souls belong to you. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for those who recognize that their soul may be tied to someone that they should no longer be tied to, God. We thank you for those who will be set free this morning. We thank you for those who will walk out of this prayer time, God. Hallelujah. With hands lifted, declaring, hallelujah, that I am free. Hallelujah. My chains have been broken. My ties have been loosed. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for those who have a desire to only be tied to their spouse, God, to people of their past, God, that they be loosed from, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah, God. We come in advance giving you praise. Hallelujah. We come in advance giving you glory. We come in advance, God, knowing that you alone are able, you are willing, and you can. Oh, God, that is good news this morning. That is good news. You are willing, you can, and you are able, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. There is no guilt in you. There is no condemnation in you. So we come against the spirit of guilt. We come against condemnation. Hallelujah. We come against the spirit of rejection in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Those who have fears, God, that the enemy has placed upon them, telling them what will not be, what cannot be. Hallelujah. We come against, God, the strongholds, God, that the enemy has built up around them through the lies of, of years, of years of negativity, God. Hallelujah. The wrong way of thinking, God. God, we pull down those strongholds right now in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Every brick, God. If it's brick by brick, if it's your battle axe, hallelujah, God, we bring it down, God. Hallelujah. We pull that, that brick down of rejection. Hallelujah. That brick of abandonment. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God. We pull down that brick of loneliness. We pull down that brick, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God. That lying brick, that stealing brick brick, God, that the brick of deception, that brick, God, of pride, that brick of greed, God, we pull it down, God, the strongholds that have been built up over their lives, God, generational curses, and we lose generational blessings, God, in the name of Jesus, God, hallelujah, wrong way of thinking, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God, we say be free, hallelujah, this morning, be free, be set whole, be, be set free, be made whole. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what that is. But we love you today, Daddy. Hmm. For your glory, oh God. Bless your name. This morning, I want us to get right into uh, this word as other people join us. Tag someone. Share this. <coughs> <coughs> I believe this is a word and a message that is going to help many. <clears throat> it is um, a series that I did several years ago, several years ago, on breaking soul ties. And every time I would go and minister somewhere and wasn't necessarily ministering on breaking soul ties. It could be on anything else. <laughs> These CDs would fall fly off the table on... <laughs> breaking soul ties because people understand that their t their soul and maybe not them but their son their daughter hallelujah their brother their sister and on a friend their soul was tied to someone that they needed to be set free from and so the first thing in the name of jesus in the name of jesus if there are any praying people on here i need you to just be continuing to pray in your spirit as we teach this word and walk through this word i think it's important <clears throat> that people receive teaching 
uh, this is how we disciple people. This is how the preaching is what brings them to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And what it encourages them. But the taught word is how we disciple people and help people to walk out um, these challenges that we have in our lives and, and gain the victory. Amen. So we thank God for the preacher. We thank God for the teacher. We thank God for the prophet, the apostle, the pastor, the evangelist. Hallelujah. And so <coughs> my allergies, guys. <clears throat> so I'm asking you to pray because what I know is that when you start uh, teaching a word like this, you are going to encounter all types of challenges. Um, I have not had any social media, internet challenges in weeks, okay? And all of a sudden, this morning, here we go, trying the loop. Um, the music on my um, playlist keeps bouncing in and out. I don't know what that's about. So, you know, that's just craziness. So, here we are in the Word this morning. Here we are in the Word this morning. And the Word says, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. If someone could put that in our new in our feed, Hebrews chapter 12 says, Since we are surrounded, verse 1, since we are surrounded with such a great witness, cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. So that we can run with perseverance, with stamina, hallelujah, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author, finisher, pioneer, perfecter of our faith. Because there is a joy. There is a joy that has been set before you. There is a joy that has been set before him. Uh, that he endured the cross, scorning the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of God. Consider him who endured such an opposition from sinners and sin so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Let us lay aside the sin that so easily besets you, comes before you, and entangles you. Good morning, Yvette. Good morning, um, <laughs> Good morning, Kay. Hallelujah. Good morning, Joyce and uh, Sister Suggs and uh, some of the brothers who had logged on earlier while I was praying, God. Uh, Brother Frank and Brother Terrence. Hallelujah. Brother um, Willie. Bless the Lord this morning. So we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for, I thank you for uh, coming into this teaching this morning. And I pray, tag someone, share, let someone know this is a word I believe that is going to help somebody walk in their freedom. From good morning, brother, um, Pat, minister Cornell. So listen, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter one, lay aside these weights, these, these things, these sins that so easily entangle you so that you can run the race that God has set before you because he endured the cross. He endured the shame. And so because he already endured every sin, you can be loose this morning. You can be set free. You can be made whole. The woman who was bowed over. The Bible says for 18 years and Jesus came and said, woman, you are loose. Man, you are loose. You do not have to be entangled in the sins of your past. Breaking soul ties. The first thing it is important that you understand that soul ties do not come only because you've had sex with someone. Your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions can be tied to someone simply because you are in close relationship with them. You are, if you are praying, listen, you can have a soul tie with someone of the same sex. It's not just man and woman and woman and man. Your soul can be tied to someone of the same sex. We saw that in Samuel where the Bible says that Jonathan's soul was knitted to David. And people have tried uh, to use this. To, uh, Hebrews chapter 12. 
uh, verses 1 through 3. People have tried to use this, the text about Jonathan and David as a way to justify homosexuality. But that is not what that text was saying. They were friends. And he, the Bible says he loved him ha as a brother. So if that loving him as a brother was likened unto homosexuality, we would now be calling, saying that they were ancestral. That is not what that text meant. That scripture in Samuel was talking about the love he had, the phileo love that he had for someone who was not his brother, who was not in his family, amen, who had, he had not had any type of eurosexual romantic love with, but this was a friend who was dear to his heart. And so he loved him as a brother. And the Bible says that their hearts, their soul was knitted. Okay. But when we often are talking about soul ties in the church, Father, I thank you. I thank you for who you are. I know that somebody is going to be set free this morning. Tag someone, share in the name of Jesus. <coughs> Invite them to be a part of this. So your soul is tied to that woman or to that man because you have opened your soul to them. Your flesh tie is the next level. Your flesh tie is the next level. This is why the Bible talks about uh, that the two become one flesh. You become one flesh when you have sex and you become one spirit. When you, you, when you come into covenant in marriage with that person. I'm sorry, beloved. If you are not married to the person you are sleeping with, you possibly have a soul tie. You definitely have a flesh tie. But your spirit is not uh, knitted to them. Okay? It says that he will leave his father, the Bible says, and he will be joined. He will be knitted. He will cleave to his wife. And she will cleave to him. And so, uh, and then we, we are one, when we are both believers in Jesus Christ, you are one in spirit with God. I believe we, we talked about that last week. So it's important that you understand soul ties can be godly and they can be ungodly. Soul ties are not all bad. Okay. You, you have a friend that you've been friends with for years. All of a sudden, you wake up and say, mm, let me call such and such. Because your soul is knitted to them. Your mind, your will, your emotions, you, your thoughts are on them. Your will, you want what's best for them. And your emotions, you, you hurt when they hurt. You cry when they cry. You rejoice when they rejoice. So your soul is knitted. Good God Almighty. Your soul is knitted. You can have a soul tie with people that you are friends with that you have never had sex with. Give you a testimony. Years ago, there was a friend of mine. And we served in different ministries in the church, outside the church. We were always doing something together. He was a man of God. And my thoughts were constantly on him. Like, not just what is he doing, but I saw struggles in his life. And I'm like, oh, I, I want him to be free. And I would be praying for him and covering him. And I confused that. I confused that, that brotherly, sisterly friendship with romance that this was who God wanted me to be with no our souls were tied now I meant to take a pair of my tennis shoes out so that I could show you uh the the way that a, a soul tie is formed and then I may have to go ahead and do that because I want this illustration to be clear to us this morning so you have a soul tie with someone and you are joined together with them in ministry, with service, okay? You're serving with them. You love them. You care about them. You rejoice when they rejoice. Hallelujah. You cry when they cry. And so you have these godly soul ties because your soul is, comes together in the union, in commonality of God. 
okay, in God's word. And so your soul tie is godly. And you come together in union with someone in friendship because your soul is tied through God. So I have this string. This is just me. And then you partner up with somebody in relationship. In godly relationship. Matter of fact, you equally yoked. Look at that. Look at that. You equally yoked. Good God Almighty. One ain't all the way up here. Hallelujah. And down there, and I already told you, and I'm going to talk about uh, being equally yoked next week. When you are, uh, uh, if anybody going to be fatter in the relationship, when you're unequally yoked, it needs to be the man. If he's going to be the one, because he's carrying the weight, but this is crazy when this is a woman, and she all down here, and, and, you know, she all here carrying the weight and, and trying to pull. No, 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 no. We want to be equally yoked. First, you're equally yoked in Jesus. And then you need to be equally yoked in spirit. I ain't talking about he, he 250 and you 180. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about being equally yoked in spirit and being uh, equally yoked in Jesus. So, break these soul ties. We come and so you get tied up with somebody. Okay? And it's all good. It's all good. Sex hasn't entered. Sex hasn't entered that thing. Y'all good. Y'all ain't had sex. This is why we need to stop telling people that you tied, your soul is tied because y'all had sex. Some people ain't had sex. And their soul is tied to that person because their, their mind, their will, and their emotions are concerned for that person. You've been in fellowship with that person. You've been in relationship that ain't got nothing to do with sex. But because your mind is on them because you spent so much time with them, you've talked to them. That's why you got to guard your ears. You got to guard your ear gate. Hallelujah. You got to guard it because stuff that's coming in opens your heart, opens your soul to that person. And it's all good. As I said, David and uh, Jonathan, their soul tie was good. This is a good, this is a good little tie. Isn't that a good little tie? That's a good little tie, you know, and then you can make a little cute little bow with it, you know, hallelujah. That's all pretty. That's so pretty. Ain't nobody has sex. Ain't nobody done nothing crazy of any form. And so you have, your soul is tied to them. You're concerned about them. They're concerned about you. Okay. Now, when it's godly, when it's a godly soul tie, because the, the, your souls are tied because your commonality is God and the will of God. It is so easy to just get untied from that. Look at that. Look at that. Amen. You know what? Our, we, our relationship, we have grown apart. You know, I ain't talking about all y'all who married. All that, you know, we've grown apart. I didn't fell out of love. I ain't talking to you. I ain't talking to you. Okay. So, because your, your soul is knitted, the Bible says. Good God Almighty. You didn't cleaved. So, it's real hard to, to break something away from some crazy glue. It's real hard. You're going you gonna to tear some skin so folk gonna be left bleeding. That's why, you know, just in just, you know, common sense, divorce ain't good. So I understand people get divorced. I understand that. I'm just saying, you you cleaving. This is just this is more than just being tied. Okay, so you can just come out of that real easy and, and be untied. That friendship, that business relationship. We we've decided to go our separate ways in business. We're going our separate ways. You you've outgrown that thing. So you're going in a separate way. Now, when it's ungodly, your souls are tied outside of the will of God. You, you know what? You can come into it with God. You can come into it with God. You can come, you can come into it, and it was good. Good God Almighty. You can come into it, and it was right. But somewhere along the line, it became ungodly. And often it becomes ungodly because now you have crossed over from your soul being tied to now your flesh being tied. Sex complicates things. It complicates things. I think I can talk about it. I've, I've lived a life of abstinence for almost 20 years. I've talked about it. I bumped my head, you know, once in that 20 years. And we ain't got to talk about if it was, you know, two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. It don't matter. I bumped my head, but I didn't stay bumped. I just refused to be on the altar every week. Good God Almighty. I'm like, no, 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 no. I just won't let that happen. 
And so when you have these ungodly soul ties, it is very difficult to be freed from them. It is very difficult because it your your soul being tied to someone, as I said earlier, is developed. Let me tell you how it happens. Through talking, spending time, a great deal of time together. It's through um, intimate association. It's again, it's not just about sex. It's intimate. So you're sharing things. You're not just talking. You're sharing things. You're sharing secrets. You're sharing dreams. You're sharing, and your soul becomes tied to them. And once your soul is open, oh my God, this is even praying for them. This is why I don't pray for men by myself. I had a brother come up to me one time at church. Let me take my glasses off so you can see. At church, he said the the Lord told me that. Um, you're to be my prayer partner. I said, God didn't tell you that. God didn't tell you that. Well, yes, he did. No, he didn't. God didn't tell you that I, me, a single woman, is supposed to be your prayer partner and you're a single man. No, he didn't. Your flesh told you that. Yeah, that's what I said right in the middle of the sanctuary. I said, now, if you believe that I'm supposed to be your prayer partner, go talk to Pastor Hill. Go tell him that that's what the Lord told you. And then if he says uh, he sees it, then I'll pray about it and see what the Lord says. I said, but God didn't tell you that about me. Matter of fact, God didn't tell you that about no woman. You need a man. You're not getting ready to get me twisted. Ah, you're not getting ready to get me tied. You're not getting ready to get me entangled in the sin that so easily besets me. And now I got to get all untangled from you. Nah, boo. Uh-uh. We smarter than that. We smarter than that. So that's the same thing. That's the same thing for me. It's the same thing. I don't pray. I don't pray for me. Not because I'm a minister or all of my, you know, the anointing that God has put on my life. I just don't. And 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 this is the even the other reason why um, I think it's wise after you have ministered and you have opened your soul and your spirit, particularly if you have laid a hard word down. If you, you know people, the, the enemy is mad and the spirit of God has moved. This is why I have taught people that the first, either your armor bearer covers you in prayer before you start meeting and greeting everybody. Or if you are married, your spouse is the first one that greets you and embrace. Okay. That was for free. So when we have these ungodly soul ties, so this is how they, you're opened up to them. They, it could be godly or ungodly because you're spending time together. You're talking, you're sharing, you're praying for one another. And so now your spirit and your soul, hallelujah, has been open to them. You're close in, in proximity. You're touching. You're, 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 you're dreaming for each other. Amen. And it's all good. And then somewhere it gets twisted. It gets twisted because the motives change when the enemy comes in. The enemy of loneliness. The enemy of lust. The enemy of even natural desires. You're saying, man, he cool. She cool. That's somebody I would, you know, like to hook up with. But man, you know, we're friends. I don't want to mess up the friendship. But then it comes in. And that's great if God takes your godly relationship into a romantic relationship. But once you let sex enters outside of marriage, it becomes ungodly. So here we go. So here we go. I want to show you this is the difference. Remember we had the little cute bow? It is the difference between being tied and being entangled. It is the difference between being tied and being entangled. When you are entangled with someone, it is you are interlocked. You are interlocked. That's literally the definition. You are interlocked. And so you have to go and untie every part of this. You have to go and untie every part part of this. You got to get rid of every memory. You got to deal with every uh, experience. You are interlocked. That is literally what being entangled means by definition. I want to read it to you because I'm uh, being, I'm being knitted 
being being knitted the you know being knitted to someone that is uh being interlocked but when you are entangled it is your interlocking becoming twisted it is your interlocking this is why it's important that we understand that soul ties are not just, they're not only ungodly they're godly soul ties they're godly soul ties and so you are interlocked with someone. You're, you're in step with them. You, you feel them. Man, your friend going through something. I already said it. You're, you're, you know, you call like, what's going on? You, you dropped in my spirit. What's going on? What's going on? I just, you know, I'm just lifting you up. Man, I just wanted to hear your voice. Man, I needed to, I needed to talk to you. How you know today? So your soul. But when you become entangled. You are now twisted. You are now twisted all up in that. This is when you start wanting to bust out folks' windows and slash tires and tell secrets and post their pictures on Facebook that y'all took in private. Or and and and, and when it when it ends. When it ends, this is, this is how you know that your soul tie was ungodly. You can't let them go. You know you need to end that relationship with that married man. You know you need to end, end that relationship with that married woman. You know it. You know you need to get up out of their bed. You know you need to stop shacking. You know it. Shacking, let me help you. Living with somebody you're not married with, too. If y'all living together, y'all might as well get married. I mean, duh. I don't get it, but you know, so you twist it and you got to, you got to deal with every twist and then you got to deal with every interlocking when you are entangled with someone laying aside every weight and every sin that so easily entangles you. You got to get, you got to get untwisted and then you got to get unlocked, untied. Amen. So you say, Minister Tate, Sister Tuesday, Elder, Prophetess, how do I do that? My soul is tied. I'm constantly thinking about him. I'm constantly. Now, let me say this. A lot of times we teach on soul ties and being free of them with women more than we do men. Why? Because women are receivers. We are receivers. We are planted into we are entered into and we are planted into. So our, our bodies become intertwined when, when you have been intimate with a man. When you have sex with a man. Your body becomes intertwined. Your soul is connected. And if you are a believer, good God Almighty, your spirit will become intertwined. Because you have been planted into and so that's not to say that men can't have soul ties that are godly and ungodly. I pray that every man under the sound of my voice that is listening now or has heard or will hear this later who is married, who are married, will understand and, and rejoice and having a soul tie with their spouse, with their wife, every man. Because your thoughts are on her. The Bible says that if you are single, uh, 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 Paul said in, in Corinthians, stay single. Because when you're married, your first thought is your spouse. His for his wife and, and hers for her husband. That's good stuff because your soul is tied. Hallelujah. Your flesh is tied. That's good news. Your spirit is tied. You, th those are benefits that come in marriage that you don't get as a single person. Your flesh and your soul can be tied, but your spirit, if it ain't, if it ain't under the umbrella of holy matrimony, your spirit got that the devil all up in there too. You might be thinking it's Jesus. Yeah, you love him. I'm not saying you don't love him. I'm not saying you don't love him. I'm not saying that he or she ain't good to you. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that you ain't even got a plan to marry them. Good God Almighty, that's awesome. I'm glad. But what you waiting on? My, what, my, what, what our grandmama and mamas, you say, why you buying the milk? Why they gonna buy the milk when they getting it for free? Get a plan. 
Jesus Almighty. So the benefit of being married is that you're yoked. You, your soul is tied well in Jesus. Hallelujah. Your flesh is under the blood with Jesus. Hallelujah. This is just good stuff. When, when you do it the right way. When you do it the right way. Now there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So we ain't beating up nobody because we all did it the wrong way. I don't know too many folk that got married as a virgin. But if they did, we say amen, right? So we all did it the wrong way. And we all have done it the wrong way. And if we ain't careful, we might do it the wrong way again. So your, your soul is not only tied when you're in something that is ungodly. It becomes entangled. Can you see that? It becomes entangled. And it becomes twisted. Okay? And it becomes twisted. And it becomes very difficult to get out of that thing. It becomes interlocked and twisted. Now, every knot in here, you got to untie it. Every word that they spoke to you, every word that was good, I love you, girl, you're so fine. Ooh, I can't live without you. You get on my nerves. I hate you. You ugly. You fat. I'm sorry. I won't. Jesus Almighty, I can't get that one loose. I won't do it again. Good God Almighty. You got to get you got to get untied of every knot, of every every part. So you got to then you got little stuff, little ancillary stuff off to the side that you got to get untied from. Good God Almighty, I got to get free of that. I got to get free of, of the house we bought together, but we weren't, we weren't married and all the things I invested in and, and co-signed on with them. And now this thing didn't work and you got to get untied. This is why I say it to get free, to get free so that you can, you can, you can focus on what God has caused you to do. So how do I break my soul tie? Sister Tuesday, how do I do it? You got to pray. You got to pray. Sometimes you're going to have to fast. Because some things only come out. Some things only get set, de de uh, uh, detached from you and come out of you by prayer and fasting. You, you, you need to stay in the word. You need to. And listen, listen, let me say this. God, I remember I went, I ended a relationship. <clears throat> the relationship was over. And God, this was me. I ain't saying this is for anybody else. The relationship was over. But God still had me praying for him. And I'm like, I don't want to pray for him. Don't I want to pray for him? Can I be real? Can I bust hit him? I'm just saying. I don't want to pray for him. But God had me still praying for him. And come to find out there was something very serious going on in his life. And I said, Lord, the longer I pray for him, my soul is staying attached to him. And Lord, I want to be free. God may cause you to pray for your ex-spouse for a season. Not because he wants your soul to stay tied to them. But he wants your spirit to stay right concerning them. Because listen, you can't pray for nobody that you mad and salty and wishing a bus would hit him. Can't pray right. You can't pray according to the will of God. So sometimes we ain't talking about, you know, no Hosea and Gomer stuff. I done told y'all God ain't got God don't need to do that no more. He'll, he'll need to have the godly hook up with the ungodly. He ain't trying to save the nation of Israel no more. OK, he, he don't need to do that over here. He only do that. What God will perhaps allow you to pray from someone that you've ended a relationship with for a season. Not to keep your soul tied, not for the relationship to continue, but so that your spirit 
will stay right concerning them and you will not allow your anger, your feelings of rejection, your feelings of abandonment, your feelings of um, emptiness, loneliness, all of that stuff. And then those things become, go from um, hurt and disappointment and rejection to anger and bitterness against that person. So I'm going to keep your spirit right, Tuesday. I'm going to make you pray for them. And then I'm going to tell you, stop. Just like I told Jeremiah, don't pray for them no more. Praying for them. And if God ain't called you to do that, don't pray for them. Don't. P-R-A-Y and don't P-R-E-Y. Neither one. Let stop. You pray for yourself. And ask God to heal you and to heal your heart. And to make you whole and to fill that empty space. This is why I, I have coached and advised uh, people who are married. Uh, particularly those who get divorced, that it is important that you have a season where you are not dating anybody because your soul is still, I don't care, you got the divorce, but your soul is still knitted to that person. You got to do all of that untying of five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and now you're getting a divorce. You got to untie yourself from all that. So you need a season, time, years by yourself without jumping in the bed with somebody, getting in a relationship with somebody. And I know it's difficult because you're used to sleeping with someone. You're used to having someone laying next to you. But I'm telling you, it is important when you have gone through a divorce, a particularly a, a, a hard divorce. Maybe it was a divorce that you didn't want and they want it. Maybe it's a divorce that both of you wanted. Maybe you knew you need to get, needed to get out of it. Sometimes it's easier when you knew you had to get out of it for you to be able to sever things and move along. Because you're like, yeah, I, I knew I needed to move on past that. Because God released me. But it is important that you understand that you have a season. That you stay, set yourself apart in God so you can become healed and on your way to wholeness. Amen. That was for free. So how do you get untied? First, you pray. And if need be, you fast. You find an accountability partner. I am constantly thinking about this man. I am constantly thinking about this woman. Yes, I had sex with them. And, and, I, and I shouldn't have done that. Now, we're talking about ungodly soul ties, which typically happens and you come into an ungodly soul tie. No, not typically, period. Because you have had some type of sexual encounter with that person. Now, we're not talking about stalkers. People that ain't never been with that brother, ain't never been with that sister, but you swear that's your husband. <laughs> you swear that's your wife. And so you stalking. We ain't talking about you. You got mental illness and you need help. We ain't talking about you. What we're talking about are people who have either had a godly friendship or relationship and that has moved to ungodly because you allowed sex to come into it. You had a dating situation and sex came into it. And listen, listen, let me say this. I have advised, coached, married couples. They get married, and all of a sudden, Sahara Desert. Everything drives up. You're not having intimacy anymore. He don't touch you like he did when you were dating. Y'all ain't swinging from the chandeliers like you was doing when you were dating. Everything that got boring and routine, he seemed to be out all the time. Maybe he is slipping and dipping. And every single time I go and I say, did you have sex before you got married? Every single time. Yes. We're going to repent right now. I know you're married. I know you're married. I know. And I also know you were with people before her. You were with people before him. This is why. And before you say I do counseling, one of the things that I believe is very important is that you sever in the spirit and in your soul. Everybody you have had sex with before you say I do. So if they slither back up, hey, how you doing, man? How you do? You looking good. That suit look good. Girl, boo. Hey, girl, you know, you know, I saw you on, on Facebook. You looking good. Thank you. My husband thinks so, too. Block. Because your soul 
has been untethered from them. You are no longer connected to them. So, in before you say I do, this is what, before you say I do, whether you do it now and he ain't nowhere near, she ain't nowhere near in the picture, you don't even know who she is. Or you're in counsel before you get married. Highly encourage it before you say I do counseling. You make a list. You might get a little scared about your list. But you make a list of every man, woman, e woman, every man you've been with, man, every woman you've been with. You might not even remember some of their names. Because you about to start having sex at 12, 14, 16, and you 50 now. You didn't forget some folk name. You just put... Put, put the place, put something that makes you remember who they are. And then you take that list and you say, I sever every tie in the natural, in the flesh, in the soul, in the spirit realm with this person, this person, this person. My heart, my flesh, my soul will only be knitted to my wife, to my husband that I'm about to marry, that is to come. And you sever it. So when, if anybody try to roll up on you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there are men I dated and ain't even about I had sex with them. That ain't it. I dated and I didn't forgot their name. Real talk. And they have rolled up, hey, Tuesday, how you doing? I'm like, hey, how are you? In my mind, Lord, bring their name back. But see, this is what I grabbed a hold of in Psalms when the word says, cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. And God will remember, he will cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. And he will remember them no more. So my thought was, why am I remembering them? Why am I remembering them when God ain't remembering them? So literally... I remember I went to my university to an event and uh, four or five of us used to live in a house, sisters, we used to live in a house. And um, my <laughs> roommates, they, I'm like, who is that? I know that. What is his name? They're like, Tuesday, you dated him. I'm like, shut up, did I? Okay, what's his name though? Because I grabbed the hole that I didn't have to remember that stuff no more. Good, bad, or indifferent. I don't want to remember it. He might have been wonderful. He might have brought me my first ring or my first ice cream cone. He might have been the first person, hallelujah, that I kissed, whatever. I don't, I don't have to remember you. I don't have to remember you. I, and I can think, and because I don't remember the bad about you, I can think well of you. I, have, I had a gentleman who came and apologized to me for how he treated me when we dated. And I'm like, and what did you do? Um, what? You don't remember? I don't. And I explained to them, listen, I grabbed the whole of that scripture. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This is about me. It has nothing to do with you. This is about me. Because I want to be free when God sends my holy Adam or my... uh. Uh, kinsman redeemer Boaz amen so we're back to how to break your soul tie you put the word on it you pray you pray about it God deliver me from this soul tie deliver my mind good God almighty deliver my mind deliver my thoughts that my thoughts are thinking on you, good God Almighty, and not on her, not on him, not on that experience. Deliver every sense, my ears, my eyes, my nose, my mouth. Deliver every sense, smelling, tasting, hearing, seeing. Deliver me from every sense. Because you will smell things and you will remember them. You will see things and you will remember them. Keep And all of those things are keeping you tied to them. You will hear something and it'll take you back. You're in the middle of Walmart. You're in the middle of Kroger's. And you see him or you see her. And this typically, again, happens with women. And you get that little feeling in the pit of your stomach. That's because there's still a soul tie. You might not even like them. They marry, you marry. It's because there's still something in you that's connected to them. I'm telling you, you will be delivered if you do what I say. You will be untied. You will be untied. You will be untangled. You will not be twisted and interlocked 
with someone you should not be anymore, particularly when you have been treated bad by them. You want to be free from those pains of your past. So that when God sends him and God sends her and you are equally yoked in God, your ties can be beautiful. Because this is smooth. I'm a smooth line now, honey. I'm a smooth line. Ain't no bumps. Ain't no dips. Ain't no curves. This is a smooth line. He ain't coming into no confusion and drama. Oh, so when he go out and he stay out a little longer than he should, you thinking he going somewhere cheating. You know why? Because that's what you still entangled in. She still uh, got, uh, she does something and it reminds you of, of something your wife said or something your mama said, your ex-wife said. And you like, oh, wait, now you don't talk to me like, she's like, baby, what you talking about? I don't have, you just didn't flew off the handle. Why? Because your soul, your mind, your memories are still tied to the other person who did that. And God wants you free. You married. You're married. And your soul is still tied to someone in your past. Get off Facebook looking at stalking, looking at their pages and what they doing. Talking about, girl, you fine. You look good. Mm, mm, mm. Stop it. Let me help you. I'm about to help you. You ain't going to like it, but I'm going to say it. If your spouse can't have access to emails, phone passwords, social media, you only got one page. You ain't got no other page out there that nobody don't know about. Your soul is tied and it's ungodly. You're operating in deception because there's something you don't want your spouse to know that you're doing. And when you are transparent and you are wide open, you are one in marriage. There is nothing that your spouse should not have access to if they don't want it. Nothing. And whatever is done in the dark will come out in the light. So you think you're getting away with something. You ain't getting away with nothing. <laughs> you ain't getting away with nothing. Because God sees it all. And he's giving you time to get it together. He's giving you time to repent. He's giving you time to stop. Before you end up having to untie everything in court. Stop it. Man of God. Woman of God. Stop it. Stop talking to your high school sweetheart, your college sweetheart, letting them inbox you. The devil is a lie. Get out my inbox. Close them conversations. Block them. Listen, I've had to tell people in advance, I'm getting ready to block you because I don't like what you send to me in your inbox. You a married man. I don't even like how you post it on my page, how you comment. You a married man. I've done it to married men and I've done it to single men. Because I ain't got time for you. Because ain't nothing about what you're saying. You, you look holy, but my spirit, because my soul is clean. It's, it's, it's been flushed out. My spirit is pretty good with Jesus. Me and him doing all right together. Good God Almighty. My flesh ain't tied to nobody. So I can hear well. I can see well. I, I got a pretty good sense of discernment. You getting ready to get blocked. So I let him know. Just being polite. <laughs> so. You are getting ready to be untied this morning in Jesus' name. You pray. You ask God to deliver you. You ask God to set you free from that soul tie. You untangle every memory. I let that go. I let that go. It was good. He bought me a car. I let that go. My name was on a $250,000 house. I let that go. He put... $10,000 in my bank account, $5,000. I let that go. I let it go. You got to untie everything. I let go of the fine dinners. I let go of the fine clothes. I let go of the fine trips. I let it go. God, thank you for the experience. God, thank you for the experience. But I let it go. I let it go. I let it go. I let go of the coarse words. I let go of the cursing. I let go of the fighting. I let go. I let go. I let go. I will not be bound to this. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, set my body apart. Set my mind apart. Set my soul apart. Set my emotions apart, God. Heal my emotions, God. In the name of Jesus, wash me. Hallelujah. Make me as white as snow. In the name of Jesus, God. The Bible says that the blood will go and cleanse your very conscience. God, send the blood and go and cleanse my conscience. You said there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. God, take away guilt. Take away shame of the things I did in the name of Jesus. Heal him. Heal her heart. God, heal them in the name of Jesus, God. Let them be healed. Let them be made whole. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, you pray. And if you need to fast, since you gave your body away, sacrifice your body and give it to Christ. Give it to God for three days, seven days, ten days. Whatever you need to do until you feel that breaking. And you're praying in that time of fasting. And you break those things that were done in the flesh and in the spirit and tied by the soul. Amen. And so you fast and you pray. And then if that means you got to not be around that person for a season. That might be hard if you're, you know, sharing custody and you got to see them. But I'm talking about being in spaces and places with them for just a season. Maybe there are things you have to do. You got to do. But if you can, not, not in bitterness, not in anger, but just separating yourself for a season. If that means I went away, I went away for a week. I went away for a week and just hung and just stayed at two friend girl houses, one in D.C. and one in L.A. I just went away. And, and let them love on me. And we laughed. And we and while I was with them, I prayed and I sought God. Because when I came back, I had to leave even the very region and the atmosphere of, of what was out in the air. It was just overwhelming. And so I just got out. And you can just take a break. Go put yourself in a hotel for a weekend. And just seek God and be prayerful. And, and heal your soul. And if that means for a season... You need to come off social media because it's too hard for you to be on there and not go look at their pages. See, back in the day, it may have been a little easier to um, end something because the only way for you to know what they was doing was to get in your car and go drive by their crib to see who was there. <laughs> and people still doing that. But now you're going to social media to see if he has a new girlfriend, if she got a new man. You know, what he's posting and all that's doing is adding to your hurt. It's building up a stronghold where rejection is a part of that wall. And there's no need for you to put yourself through that, beloved. So you're going to pray. You're going to fast. Journal. Journal it. Journal it if you need to. This is, this is how I feel about it. This is what I'm going through. Cry about it. If you need to go somewhere and scream about it. But you got to release it. Sometimes, depending on how, how deep your soul tie is, you may need to go through deliverance. Where you purge all of that stuff and it comes up and it comes out. So whatever it is you need to do to be short of doing anything illegal, <laughs> of breaking that soul tie. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against every ungodly soul tie. We thank you for the godly soul ties, the godly relationships, the healthy relationships, the godly friendships, the healthy friendships, God. We thank you for friends we've had for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, God, who feel us, who know us, that we can be transparent with, that we can be real with, that they want what's best for me and we want what's best for them. God, we thank you for godly soul ties. We thank you for the godly soul tie that comes through marriage and holy matrimony, God, that they're knitted, God, in the name of Jesus. They have leaved and they have cleaved. They've lit, left and they have cleaved, God, in the name of Jesus, God. They have cleaved to their spouse in the name of Jesus. They are one in soul and they are one in spirit and they are one in flesh, God. And we seal every nook and every cranny and every crack in the name of Jesus, God, that will try to let the enemy in. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, God, we seal it and we say they will celebrate 25, 
50, God, 60 years of marriage, God, however you choose to do that, we say bless God and amen. God, we thank you for what you have done in godly marriages that are marriages of example to the young married couple, God, to even the mature married couple, and yes, to the single. Now, God, I speak to every ungodly soul tie, and I command it to be broken. God, give her the strength to walk away. Give him the strength to walk away. In the name of Jesus, God, let them seek and desire to be made whole and to be healed, God. God, let them purge themselves and separate themselves, God, from everything that is unlike you, God. Let them set themselves apart to be set apart unto consecration to who you have for them, God. Father, we seal every gate in the name of Jesus, every gate in the name of Jesus, the five gates on a woman, God, the four gates on a man, oh God, and we say be set apart until your husband comes in the name of Jesus, God. Father, I pray for wise counsel and, and wise fellowship and wise sisterhood and wise brotherhood, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do as you break these soul ties, God, as you break away guilt and you break away shame and you move away and move aside condemnation as they set aside everything that easily entangles them, God. Hallelujah. If it's a stretch wide 42 on a man or curves and 36, 24, 36 on a woman, God, whatever it is that so easily entangles them, God, let them lay it aside so that they can run the race, uh, God, without condemnation, without, without guilt, outside of sin, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Let their lives be lives that want to please you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even now, as they take a breath in and they breathe out, move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Break the soul tie that was ungodly to the ungodly touched when they were six years old. When they were eight years old, that went on for years, that went on for years, the ungodly touch in the name of Jesus, God, their soul was tied to them. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. God, we break that. We break that. God, heal them from the inside out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Molestation and rape, God. Men and women, boys and girls, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God. Not an act that they walked into on their own, but their mind is still tied to that thing. Their emotions are still tied to that thing. And so, God, we break that even now. Let the perfect love of God cast that thing out in the name of Jesus. Let it sever it. Come in like your battle axe, O oh God, and settle it, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, send their ministering and warring angels, God, to sever it with the sword. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. To cut it, God, in the name of Jesus. To cut that cord that they're still tied to like an unbiblical cord. Hallelujah, that they're getting feeding from and nourishing from. I need him. I need her. No, you you need Jesus. Hallelujah. You need Jesus. Hallelujah. You need the word. You need the name. You need the blood. Hallelujah. Be set free this morning. Be made whole this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, be healed in your emotions. Be healed in your mind. Hallelujah. Be healed in your body. In the name of Jesus, God, I command their souls to be healed. You said all souls belong to you. So God, take their soul back. They don't know how to give it to you. They don't know how to renounce. They don't know how to denounce. Hallelujah. God, let them repent. For the ungodly encounters in the name of Jesus, God, and be set free to the prostitute, God. Hallelujah to the person who sold their body, whether it was in a bed or on a pole. God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Whether it was the pimp or the prostitute, let them be set free this morning. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. The things they were brought into as a child that they never should have experienced. They never should have seen. God, in the Jesus name, have mercy, oh God. Deal with the person who did it to him. But God, help them today. Be a keeper. Be a restorer of the breach. 
Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. We appropriate the blood, God, where their innocence was breached. Where adultery happened and covenant was breached. God, be a healer this morning. Go deep. Go deep. Go deep, God. Go deep. Go deep. As they breathe in and they breathe out, deliver. Hallelujah. As they start coughing, God, let them know. As they start feeling like they want to throw up, God, in the name of Jesus, they feel like they have to pass gas. Let them know that they are being delivered in the name of Jesus. Take them through, Daddy. I'm not there. We're not there to lay hands on them. Hallelujah, God. Take them through this morning. Free. Be free, 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 be free. Let them forgive themselves this morning. Hallelujah. I forgive me. I forgive me for the stuff I I didn't know better to do and the stuff I knew better to do. God, I forgive me. Hallelujah. And I forgive them in the name of Jesus. Be set free. Be set free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be set free. Ha! Ye da bo shana ha ta da bo she koramasaya. Be set free this morning. Glory, 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 glory. Now feel them, God. Feel them, God. You are the beloved of God. You are the righteousness of God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. It was for you, God. It was for you, beloved, that he took the cross, that he took the whip, that he took the crown, that he took the piercing, that he took the nails. It was because he loved you. He so loved you. He so loved you. He so loved you. Fill him up, God. Fill him up, God. Hallelujah. 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 As they're being set free this morning, as they are being loosed and untied, hallelujah, untethered from that thing that they are going free. Hallelujah, that only at one end is you and the other end, oh God, is them. Hallelujah, there's a straight line between you and them. There's no foes, there's no dips, there's nothing hindering their prayers between you and him. There's no guilt here, there's no shame here, there's no condemnation here, there's no fear, there's no rejection, there's no abandonment. Hallelujah, there's no bitterness, there's no unforgiveness, there's no anger, they're free. Call him free this morning. Call him free this morning. Fill him. Fill him, daddy. Fill him with your word. Get in the word. The Bible says when the enemy comes and finds that your house has been clean and set free, he goes and looks for seven more to move in because you haven't filled it. It's pretty because it's clean and you've been delivered and their ties have been broken. But you got to keep get that space filled. You got to put the word in it. You got to keep praising it. You got to keep worshiping it. Serving. Giving God. Giving to God. And doing the things that God has asked you to do. God, I thank you for these, your people. I pray that this word fell on good ground. And I pray that it produces 40, 60, and 100 fold. I thank you, God. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty liberty in their mind in their soul and there's freedom in their physical man we love you today daddy in jesus name god bless you i love you with the love of the lord the lord says the same we'll be together next week god bless you